Welcome back to, uh, Avian Attorney. I went and asked somebody how to pronounce that word, and I... <laughs> already forgot. Very well. I call the police officer who investigated the crime scene. I call upon Inspector Just Volarity. Step up to the stand, Inspector. Recite the oath. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please recite your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Inspector Just Valerity. I am a servant to the law, scourge of the gutter rats. That will do, Inspector. We've all had your monologue before. Well, Kokoriko really is going for a speed round, ain't he? Now, can you tell us what you witnessed on the morning of the 7th of January? Of course. At 10 o'clock in the morning, I was called to the Louvre's, Louvre's Grand Gallery by one of the King's Royal Guards. Did he just say a clock? There I saw Prince Juan, King Louis Philippe, of course Major Hal with a rose in his hand, around two dozen citizens. Citizens and the king himself all attest to seeing Major Howe taking the rose from Prince Juan's hand and then promptly dropping dead. I looked at the morgue, covered upon an examination of the corpse. Coroner determined with absolute certainty Major Howe died of poisoning. Aside from a prick upon the finger, there was no sign of external harm to his body. Therefore, the poisoned rose must have been the cause of death. Putting the pieces together, it does seem very implicative of the prince. I have no further questions. Damn. Hoping that the coroner's report would determine that the guy died from a freak heart attack or something. That'd make for a particularly speedy trial, wouldn't it? No. You ain't so lucky, eh? Something else must be amiss in the old bird's testimony. Right. Tear it apart. Like a falcon. Jumping on a squirrel. Your Honor, I wish to cross-examine the witness. Falcon, wasn't it? Don't waste the court's time. A high-ranking police officer would never lie on the witness stand. I wouldn't accuse the inspector of lying. I just want to make sure that every base is properly covered. Uh, this sounds like pointless nitpicking to me, but I'll allow it. Now, go on, Falcon, do your cross-examination. Ten o'clock, you say? Correct. Ten o'clock. From the time you were called, how long did it take you to arrive at the crime scene? About five minutes. I happened to be in the neighborhood Blaze Royale at the time. It's a simple journey. I'm guessing that Major Howell would have been dead for mm, ten minutes by the time you arrived. Be a fair estimate. Plenty of time for a bad guy to slip away, eh? That's definitely a possibility. I don't think the court would appreciate my wild speculations, though. Inspector, I would like to ask you about the victim. It's curious. We spent our whole investigation focus on the murder, but I just don't know much about the victim himself. Exactly who was Major Howell? Royal guard. A respected dog who was getting on the years. I weren't friends with him. I had met him on several occasions in the past. Banquets, royal meetings, and the sorts. He was a stern, no-nonsense fellow. But a good man. His wife and children no doubt miss him. Surely. Thank you for the insight, Inspector. Inspector, you say that the coroner determined with certainty 
that Major Hal was killed by poison. Yeah. The state of the signs and symptoms were textbook. No possibility that this test was natural. Any idea what type of poison? The coroner wasn't certain. First, he posited that it was a plant-born poison like that of the aconite flower. When he learned how fast the poison had taken effect, he noted that this was atypical of aconites. Consequently, he suggested there may have been some newly engineered concoction. Newly engineered poison, you say? Well, that only reaffirms that this was a very deliberate assassination attempt. Yeah, indeed. Exactly, this Major Powell poisoned. What was the delivery mechanism? His finger was pricked by the poison rose. He even comment commented out loud about it seconds before dying. All 22 citizens who witnessed the murder attested to seeing and hearing this. Is there any possibility that it was poisoned by something else? What an absurd thing to ask, JJ. You just heard that 22 people saw the pricked victim prick his finger and die. What are you suggesting? The pricked finger had no relation to the poisoning. All in! That's exactly what I'm saying. I don't doubt that Major Howe was poisoned, but I do doubt that the rose was the cause. Unbelievable. Only a total buffoon could fail to draw the blatant link here. JJ, as tempting as it is to sit here and lecture you on the basics of cause and effect, I'll end this discussion painlessly. Inspector, please tell the defense that you found traces of poison on the thorns of the rose itself. That should alleviate all doubt that the rose was, in fact, the poison delivery mechanism. Uh, yeah, actually, I can't tell him that. I tried to ask, but why ever not? We uh, didn't check. It just seemed obvious. So, uh... Given the timing of the incident, it was... yeah. Well, now would be a good time to make a test. Here's a marvelous thought. Prick the finger of the defendant with the rose. If there's no poison on the rose, then will Prince Juan lives and he is free to go. If the rose is poisoned, then the prince dies. But that's okay, because the punishment would be just and fitting of the crime. <laughs> marvelous suggestion. What is this, a witch trial? This isn't America. <laughs> this isn't America, Severin. That's not how we do things here. Calm your feathers, JJ. It's clearly a joke. There are far more humane ways of testing for poison. I'm sure the inspector will perform his duty with due diligence. Actually, uh... Kinda... Can't... Is that, given the uh, dangerous nature of the flower, it was uh, destroyed. We uh, burned it to ashes. Such unprofessionalism. We have no way to test whether the rose was poisoned, and this whole trial ought to be called into question. Nice try, JJ, but through the process of complete reasoning by elimination, we can still deduce with absolute certainty that the rose was poisoned. In other words, there was nothing else at the crime scene that could have caused the poisoning. Hold it! There was something else at the crime scene that could have contained the poison. Something the investigative police blindly overlooked. Look at this. What, pray tell, am I looking at here? Paper wrapper to a piece of chocolate. It's found at the Louvre. Sol de Tibre, to be precise. And we can date its consumption to the day of the incident. I'm not suggesting that Major Hal ate a piece of poison chocolate moments before he died. I most certainly am. Oh. Hmm. You see this wrapper at the crime scene yourself, Inspector. Please, time to stop for us to not have time or resources to draw every piece of trash at the crime scene, I'm afraid. In other words, you overlooked it. Astounding unprofessionalism. <laughs> the prosecution is right to be disgusted. What a disgraceful display, Inspector. I offer my apologies, Your Honor. I don't want your apologies. I want you to do your damn job properly. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. 
as you wish. I'll take my leave. Till next time, Assures. Let me get this straight. This chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene. That is correct. And you have reason to believe it was consumed on the day of the incident. I do. I have an expert food tasting witness who is willing to testify if need be. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anyone like that. Who on earth are you talking about, Falcon? Oh. Me. You know for certain that Major Owl consumed this chocolate? Well, that is a fact we are still investigating. I see. And you have evidence this chocolate was, in fact, poisoned? Again, that's something we need a little more time to definitively prove. So then, in actuality, you don't have any evidence whatsoever that Major Hell consumed some poisoned chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you plucked straight out of the gutter. It's weak even for you, JJ. Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. He's a man who claims to have had an excellent view of the people going in and out of the Louvre at the time of the incident. Call upon Monsieur Toussaint Kingly. Could the witness please approach the stand and recite the oath? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Oh, right, the oath. Uh, we're to speak without hatred, without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please state your full name and occupation for the court record. My name is Toussaint King. I am a person who fishes. A person who fishes, so you are a fisherman. Oh, oh, is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. I beg your pardon? Here comes to Saint Kingly, the kingfisher. Clearly, he must be a fisherman, because did you hear all oh, kingfishers are fishermen? Well, you are carrying a fishing rod. And, and, can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel, and bait without being branded a fisherman? Hmm, look, look, the prosecutor is carrying a riding crop. Clearly, he must be a horse jockey. Oh, for pity's sake. Fine, fine. You list your occupation as person who fishes instead of fisherman. Thank you. Actually, why do you carry a riding crop, Severin? I've never seen you ride a horse. I don't know, JJ. Why do you, a 30 something year old with no health problems, carry a cane? This is steering far off course. Could the prosecution please get back to his questions? Of course, Your Honor, I'm not sure, King Lee. Is it true that you were near by the Louvre at the time of the incident? Yeah, I was sitting on the railing of the Bons d'Arts. The, uh, Bons d'Arts. The Pont d'Arts, that's the new bridge that's just a stone's throw from the Louvre's south entrance, yes? That's right. <laughs> and what were you doing at the time of the incident? Fishing. <laughs> King fishes. All right, Falcon. So you would have had plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the palace. Can you tell us who you saw? Well, it was a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. At 9am, I saw the King, Louis Philippe himself. In the building, he was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then, around 9.30 a.m., I saw these shifty-looking fogs lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to the witness use of the term shifty-looking. It's fake and, uh, you know, biased. No, really, he looked, uh, super shifty. I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully. I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. Rub the stem of a rose, you say? As if he were applying something to the flower, perhaps. Well, I'm sure, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course, it was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. But, uh, yeah, definitely he was putting some sort of powder on the stem. Well, oh, even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court, it sounds like what we have here is a direct witnessing of the defendant readying the murder weapon. The defense claims that the rose was never poisoned, and yet, here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. Smell perjury. You do? No question. I saw a shifty looking criminal reading poison and cackling near the scene of a crime. It's not believable at all. I think you might be right. I wonder if I have any evidence that calls to Sun's story into doubt. Yes. Yes, I do. 
Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Billy, this nonsense again. I just heard the witness directly describe your client writing poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, Your Honor. Fine, do your thing. Go on, Falcon, make a fool out of yourself. It's like you did last time. So you saw a fox rubbing the stem of a rose. Yep, saw it with my own eyes. How far away were you from the south entrance? Twenty meters, perhaps? Thirty? I'm somewhat doubtful that you can make out powder being applied to anything of these sorts of distance. But sure, I don't claim to have seen the powder itself. I say it looked like he was applying powder to the flower stem. It could have been a wax or a liquid or whatever, but the guy was definitely putting something on the flower. Let's see. How nice and vague. Monsieur Kingley, you say that you saw the king himself enter the Louvre. Indeed I did. Who did you see in the king's entourage? Well, it was the king himself, obviously. There were quite a few guards, uh, maybe four or five, including a big dog who I hear is the guy who died. Which how? I think that was all. I see. Kingway, you claim that you saw a shifty looking fox. Yep, super mega shifty. All oh, foxes are shifty. King. There must be at least 100 foxes in Paris. Are you sure the fox you saw was Prince Juan? Well, he was wearing a swamp hat that hanged low over his eyes. I hear that's how they wear them in Spain. I'm not much of a fashion expert. The rest of his outfit looked quite out of place for the French winter. Is that all you're going by? fashion sense. Oh, I uh, nearly forgot. I heard him call it Passerby Senor. I thought that was peculiar. Well, that's most likely him, yes. I'm sure Kingley, you say that you were sitting upon the railings of the Pont des Arts on the morning of the incident. Yep. Alright. Let's begin with the attack. Mr. Kingley, you have a good point of view of the Louvre's south entrance, didn't you? Yep, Pantea, this is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Gallery's south side. What about the other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like if you were entering from Tuileries Gardens? Or the Place de Carousel? No, oh, I couldn't possibly see those areas from the bridge. But of course, this isn't relevant. I'm sure Kingley witnessed Prince Juan entering the south entrance with flower in hand, and that's what counts. What if Prince Juan didn't enter from the south entrance? What if he approached the Louvre from... South, east, west... To the air garden, to the west... We are... To a... Very Larry's gardens to the... Tea gardens to the west! That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered from the Louvre? Entered the Louvre from the tea gardens? As a matter of fact, yes I do. I have definitive proof that Prince Juan approached from the west, not the south. Hey, I know what you saw, Monsieur. I know what I saw, Monsieur. I'm Delta 2. Go on, JJ. Show us this definitive proof that Prince Juan entered from the Louvre. Entered the Louvre from the tea gardens. Look at this. A book page. Page 44 of Don Quixote, specifically, was found just outside the Louvre's west entrance. And this is relevant because... I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for some time. And yet, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked. You realize what this means, don't you, Severin? The defendant was present in tea gardens prior to entering the Louvre. This also means that, in all likelihood, the defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance, not the south. It could not possibly have been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Pont des Arts. What? I know what I saw, Monsieur. 
point. The Eye Falcon? Maybe the defendant took the long way around. One can still travel from Tulia to the... from T to the Louvre South Entrance by walking along the river. Extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery. Let's not say such silly things, Kakariko. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there to just lead the investigation. Now you're the one who's blindly speculating. It's not blind speculation, it's a viable hypothesis. You are fine of logic, aren't you, Kukuriko? Let's talk about Occam's razor. When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must set aside the one that imposes the we must decide with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these series takes fewer assumptions? One. Page from Prince Juan's book fell off to on his way to the Louvre's south entrance. Two. Prince Juan deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would be discovered. Then he took the long way around. How oh, dare you! The nerve of you to lecture me on such basic philosophical concepts. I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes. Monsieur Falcon, please calm yourself. The point of all this yammering. The ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricated. Made up. Utter fiction. No, everything I've said is the truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. I'm not a fisherman! See? See? He admits it himself. That's not what I meant. Prosecutor, you have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? At this point, at least. Falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monsieur Kingley's testimony is false. Yeah, no, no, uh... That doesn't mean Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. I have 27 more. But I did see something! I really did! Alright, so maybe I didn't exactly see a... nifty looking fox. I made that part of the story up. But I did see a swan looking around the south entrance the morning of the murder. Swan. Ew, shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. Can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Uh, Your Honor? Judge Romulus? We're out of time. And made Smith over to start the uh, Air V Tortoise trial. That late already? Curses, I was hoping we could have this case wrapped up in a single trial session. Such a shame, but ultimately, an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy one. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to hear your moralizing. We'll resume this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. Prosecutor, do your damn job. Give this stupid fox a conviction already. Shall do my best to ensure that justice is served, Your Honor. What came up in that trial, eh? Yeah, no doubt about it. But something's bothering me. That fisherman guy, Monsieur Kingley, on the witness stand. Maybe he wanted his minute in the spotlight. Some people say and do strange things to get attention. I really think that was it. I assumed something more anus was going on. Keep an open mind. Anything's possible at this stage. To be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about this trial. A Romulus. He's acting without a shred of professionalism. He's obviously more, obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he is in discovering the truth. Why? Maybe as a vendetta against the Spanish royalty. I'm not so sure. There's something else at work here. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, Ultra Falcon. Uh, sorry to bother you, but uh, this letter just arrived. I think it's for you. Letter for me. I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Been demoted with decorous status, Rupert. Oh, hush hush, Barrison, I don't need to be, uh, pitied by a first-year dropout. Oh, good comeback. 
So what's the last say, Falcon? It's black bread. Bread made with cut out loose paper letters. Oh, I didn't know those things actually existed. Let me see. Falcon, stop your investigation or there will be consequences. It's gay. There's no question that this letter originated from Major Hell's murder. He or she must be a way that we're getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right. Why would a person write with cut-out newspaper letters like this? Asking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Though, I can't help but wonder why they would bother, since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We, uh, still going ahead with our investigation though, right? Nope. Yeah, yeah we are. Oh yes, absolutely. If the lawyer were deterred every time they received a threatening letter, they would never get any work done. Besides, we've only got three days before the next trial session. Can't afford to be worrying about petty things like dying. Stay, stay, stay. Wow, you're right. Let's make those days count. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next episode.